first up. It's a new time. Okay, we've got some fully assembled motor wing for feathers. Um, we suck, stock this as a solder it yourself kit, but there's some situations or projects where you want it to come fully soldered and assembled. So for a couple bucks extra, we will put the terminal blocks on and the headers on, and so you can plug and play it with any of our headers that have stacking headers on it, or you can plug it in. Uh, yeah, basically you get I squared C motor driver, PWM controller, and then uh, two dual H bridges, so you can control two steppers or four DC motors total with this uh, power from here. And like I said, it's fully assembled, just plug it into any feather, and it'll work with all of them because it only uses I squared C for data, including uh, it should work just fine with that new seed feather. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, next up. We've got another battery pack. The most uncomfortable AirPod ever. I yeah. know. <laughs> so this battery pack, uh, it's kind of it's useful. Pack. It's a useful, and I think it's really useful for people making robots and projects with Raspberry Pi because, and other single board computers because it's 5,000 milliamp hours. It's not too big, and it's got two USB outputs. So that can be really handy if you want to have, you know, one USB output for your single board computer and the other USB output for your motors or whatnot. It's um, a nice slim style. Um, battery pack. It's got the little indicator here telling you how charged it is. Uh, you charge it over micro USB and then you have two ports. Um, each port can do up to two amps. I don't think you should try to draw two amps total from both or four amps total, so two from each. I think you're going to get the best performance with um, two amps total. So you can have one that like spikes up to two and the other one that's maybe a little bit lower, but you definitely do get two USB outputs, so it's handy. And then when you charge it, it'll draw two amps from USB. So you'll make sure that use a, a good uh, USB hub or uh, computer power supply that can provide it. Um, but it's a nice slim style power bank. So nice, I like it. Next up. Handy. This is just like our micro servers that we've had for a while, but this time it comes with a JST three pin connector on it. And um, like someone on the show and tell mentioned, it's handy because we have a lot of boards now that have these uh, three pin JST connectors that you can uh, use for powering NeoPixels or servos. Historically, we had these cables that you'd make an adapter with uh, to plug into a servo, but now you can plug it in directly. So I thought I would show this maybe on the overhead. That's a good demo. So here I've got the Pi badge, and we've shown the Pi badge with analog inputs on this port, but you can also do uh, PWM outputs. So when you plug this in... We did a machine learning bubble blowing project where you sit up or down yeah. and it would change a servo based on that, which was kind of cool. The other thing I like is with Circuit Python, you get a REPL. That's and right. And you can see what's going on. And I think this is probably one of the best, coolest ways for folks to, especially if they're just getting started in programming. To, too easy. To see, it's too, yeah, it's too easy. Um, go figure. Um, yeah, I actually don't think it could ever be too easy to program. Um, I think you could, we could never make it too easy. Yes. But anyways, um, the fact that you can see the print statements and such on the screen while it's doing the things will help you debug. Yeah. And also using the REPL to send code over is super fast. And you don't have to compile and wait, compile and wait, compile and wait. Yes. So um, yeah, this version is just printing out and using CircuitPython. But of course, this works with any servo. You know, you can use this with MakeCode, you can use this with uh, so Python, you can use it with Arduino. It's just like every other server that you're used to, except uh, we now just have it with this nice, flexible JST cable, and you can just plug yeah. and unplug it as desired. So yeah. we'll make those projects easier. Especially like Halloween has these, all of our Pi Gamers and yeah. Pi Badges has them. So we're starting to add these to all of our dev boards. It just makes it easier to plug and play. And this is also a badge, so you can make a badge that does something when someone uh, presses a button or when you display something on your badge, all sorts of things you can do. Yes. Okay. Super cool. So micro servo, now with JST. Next up, Dr. Theopolis from Buck Rogers. So these are, head. this is actually an old product. This is like product number 619, but it's been updated now. So um, we had a supplier for these RGB LEDs and they were giving us inconsistent uh, color ordering. And so we found another supplier. So this has been um, totally revised. So the pinout is different. Um, it's now reversed from what it was before, but we have at least a consistent supplier now, so we shouldn't have things changing around. Um, so just watch out there if you are using, if you've used these before, um, you'll need to flip them when you solder them. 
and change the RGB pinout or you know change the design in your um, layout program. But okay. we now have a consistent supplier. All right, this is a, this next this is a big deal product, but we have like you know some a couple more to go. But this is a big deal. This is the ATCC Crypto. I wonder what's this lock all about? Well, that lock stands for security. Uh, the ATECC 608 is the latest generation crypto auth chips uh, available from Microchip. There's actually a couple uh, providers now making these. These are no longer the only ones. And what's interesting about these chips is that as you are doing IoT projects, you might have private keys that you need to um, securely store. And no microcontroller really is secure. You can always glitch them or um, like etch away the metal layer and, and you know fix the, up the fuses so you can read out um, code, so it's not, and if you're using like a Python or a single board computer, you know, your file system is not encrypted. It's, it's completely world readable. And also, so every single thing I touch that's an online service that has anything to do with programming and development, it's a bunch of keys. You're just constantly moving keys around. It's true, it's all keys. So this is a chip that's specifically designed to store, I think about 16 different cryptographic keys and it will, then you can do challenge responses through it. So that once you program it with, you know, at the factory, for example, you would program it with your private key for a certificate. And then later on, when you need to authenticate it, a challenge will be sent. You transmit that challenge over I2C, it gives you back a response. So there's no leakage of the key. That key doesn't actually leave the chip and the chip is designed to be secured. So it does a couple things. It can do um, hashes, it can do SHA-256, HMAC, it can do I can't remember the encryption for uh, public key certificates. It's URLM something something. I don't know. And AES 128. It can also do random number generation. And of course, it can store um, these keys securely. And it's STEMIQT. And it's STEMIQT. So it's I squared C. It can run from three to five volts. And we made it really easy for you to use. It's a nice, small, compact breakout. Um, and you can, of course, solder to these pads. Or if you don't want to, just use um, these handy quick connects. So these are cables that um, plug in their chainable. This is a SparkFun invention, which I think is super cool. Um, and so for example, we have this proximity sensor and then maybe a crypto chip, and then you plug it into um, your main microcontroller. Uh, you can use wires, or if you have this connector, you can chain them together. And then each one in the chain uh, communicates over I2C. I will say one thing about this chip, there's no data sheet. Uh, the data sheet's under NDA, and I didn't want to sign NDA because then I couldn't release anything that we learned. So there's libraries and code for this. Um, Arduino wrote a really cool library um, that works quite well with it. There's a crypto auth library in Python available for microchips. They released code for it, and we're working on a circuit Python library, but there's no data sheet. So if you want to see what it does, there's a summary data sheet. And if you want a more detailed data sheet, look for the data sheet for the ATECC 508 which was under NDA and then was got released and is similar enough to this that it's basically cross-compatible. How cross-compatible? I don't know because there's, I can't see the data sheets under NDA. So I'm doing the best I can here. But it does work. <laughs> it works with their code. And hopefully at some point they will release a full data sheet. Until then, please check out the ATECC 508 data sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to email a time-coded link you can do that with YouTube when you're watching a video. You can right click it and say uh, URL with this time. Yeah. And I'm going to send it to Xavier and Bob and a couple other people at Microchip. And I'm going to say, look at this great demo with this functional thing. And then check out the chat with all these people that are really happy that want to like use this they chip. They love this chip. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do later tonight. And another thing that's interesting is we've been adding this chip onto a lot of our sh airlift shields and breakouts, but we haven't necessarily populated it because, we, again, we didn't have the library support yet. Another thing that I found out that's not published anywhere because, again, the data sheet's under IDA, is to if you have other devices on the i squared C bus with this, um, because of the way this does the sleep and wake up mode, um, try to run your i squared C bus at about 400 kilohertz, not the standard 100 kilohertz. I, I don't have any more information other than they're like, yeah, sometimes it seems to kind of like collide with other devices on the bus unless it's running at 400 kilohertz or higher. That's okay. all the information I've got. All but right. if you're using it on a single bus and without a lot of other sensors, it works great. Next up, a cable. A cable. Okay, this, this is a big deal. This big cable. deal. This cable, it's a JST-SH cable, actually a lot like the quick cables I just showed you, um, except it's nine pins and it's AA style, so it doesn't flip around, you'll see it's straight through style. 
And we got this for the next product. This is coming soon. All right, ready? This is it. Yes, this is the exciting new product. Uh, so last year we did the Halloween for holidays, for the, the um, Halloween holiday. And we're gonna have a, a Halloween M4 come out soon. But uh, we also wanted to do, you know, a lot of people were like, well, I want two eyes, right? Because you can't really have just one eye. Why do you want two? So we're like, okay, well, let's think about how we could design a board that had two eyeballs on it. And then, you know, we have the SAMD51, which is really fast. Uh, we just got these really beautiful 1.5 inch, 240 by 240 IPS displays. So that's really cool. And then um, we put it together on one PCB and each display has its own SPI bus so we can run DMA to both of them. And the chip is fast enough and uh, good enough that it can basically render with like a simple 3D rendering algorithm. Uh, so it looks as good as the Raspberry Pi eyes, but you don't have to tote around a Raspberry Pi. Um, a right. couple th things on this though. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, so one, the nose is boopable. Um, yes, the yep. nose is a capacitive touch button that when you touch it, it, you can detect it and do stuff like make a noise or blink the eyes or whatever. Yeah. Also the art, the silk is in uh, partnership. Miss Monster. Miss Monster. Who does and, a cool art, both yeah. 3D and 2D, and designed the silk screen for us. That's a huge fan base. Already on Twitter, people are like, hey, Lady Ada and Miss Monster teamed up. We what? are teaming this is up. This, this is, is like a, like a crime-fighting duo, except for they don't fight crime. They make electronics. They well, what's funny is, so Philby told the story on Show & Tell. We, you know, we, we were ready to send this out to fabrication. I was all done. I was like, look at the silk screen. It great. And then we realized everyone's going to ask, oh, is the nose capacitive touch because the teeth are on the ground plane um, mm. but the nose are like well, you know, we want to touch it so we made it so it's it's a capacitive touch button yeah, let's show this thing on great so um, let's show this off so I've got it here actually with the lenses um, so we already stocked these lenses and you can see they, they do make a big difference we have glass and plastic ones um, and we'll be releasing a, a plastic cutout that you can make or buy that will hold these against you can see there's these mounting is there a light holes. sensor on that thing there is a light there's sensor, a light sensor on that thing but I don't think I didn't program in the code that changes the yeah. eye tuplary, but there's a light sensor here, and uh, when I when I get to uploading it to the latest code, it'll do the light, will change the pupils, um, and then on the back, so you've got the two displays. Again, they're IPS 240 by 240, so they're nice, uh, crisp, beautiful displays. So they, if you compare these to the Halloween, they look really good in comparison. Um, you've got three tactile switches. And this is a Seesaw coprocessor to help do that. Um, we've got a light sensor over here. And we've got that um, Stemma three pin cable. So again, you want to connect servos or NeoPixels through here. This is an I2C port. So you want to connect like these sensors. You can, you can connect them through an adapter cable. Uh, and over on this side, you got that reset button. This is a, a four pin connector for an optional PDM microphone. Uh, so you can maybe do some like sound effects or like reacting to audio. We want to do more audio capabilities on this board compared to the Halloween. So this has a stereo headphone out connected to the uh, two DAC pins on here so you can do stereo sound effects. Uh, it still has that um, uh, speaker output here so you can connect an 8 ohm speaker. Uh, it's LiPo battery powerable so you can uh, plug in got a LiPo here. So of course for portable uses, you plug it in, it can charge over USB, and then it can run uh, also off of a LiPo. And then another three pin uh, cable over here. Uh, there's also accelerometer, so you can do tap detection or motion detection, so you can like tilt the eyes. Uh, and QSPY flash for storing images and sound effects. So you know you can have sound effects playing while you do the eyes, and then of course this cute silk screen. Uh, and then I, got a, I got a question. What's your question? I got a question. Is this too easy? No. Yeah. Why What's is it so thing? easy? Um, now, so you showed this cable earlier, and I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of costumes that it'd be cool to like have an eye on each side, but you know, I'd have to, I'd have to break this in, in half. Yeah. And could I use that cable, and then connect these up? Because it looks like you kind of could. You kind of can. You kind of can. There's these two connectors here, so you yeah. see these. These are the JST H, and you can even see a little bit the traces going through here, and then these holes. Yeah. So these holes are there. It's not easy to break them. We didn't want to make it easy because then you'd accidentally break them. But with you know, if you if you're trying with pliers, you can snap off the nose. I will mention that once you snap off the nose, of course, you can no longer boop the nose. Yeah. Um, and then you can have the eyes separated. Yeah. 
So now... Um, and those little green tabs, oh. for folks who don't know, no, you can leave them on. I, I like they're, to keep they're, them they're on. They're screen protectors. They're screen protectors. Lady, Lady Ada saves these forever, and I'm just like, are you waiting for the Queen of England to I visit? And then why. we'll put out the good silverware. I don't like to remove and the screen the, And we'll finally peel off these screens. Fine, I'll remove it. <laughs> there you go. So it does look a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. So you can have the eyes now separated. You might even be able to go longer, but we wanted to keep it safe. So it's like you know six inches or four and a half inches. 100 millimeters um, but now you can like you know put these around differently or mount them separately and of course there's tons of mounting holes to make that easy so you know you do that the nose you lose the nose keep that for later um, but yeah. instead you get this um, nice separatable eyeball yeah. so we want and you can to even make, make the cable longer if you wanted to you you can we're starting with 100 millimeters and then we'll you know because yeah. it is running 50 megahertz spi over these yeah. Uh, so it's, it is a little risky, but uh, I think you could probably go twice as long. All right. Uh, and that's the Monster Mask. So coming soon, we're making these now. So sign up. We'll be having these in the next couple of days. Plenty of time before Halloween. But Halloween is every single day, and uh, we're proving it. It's true. Okay. And that is uh, new products. All right. We got some time to do a couple quick questions. Okay. Well, we're going to do a recap. Oh, right. Okay. Ready? Wait, ready? Ready? New, 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 new. We've got a fully assembled motor feather wing for steppers and DC motors, no solder required. This battery pack is 5,000 milliamp hours and has two USB outputs. Each can do two amps max, so great for single board computers with accessories. This micro servo is just like our kind of classic micro servo, except now it has a JST three pin connector so it can plug into all of our Stemma cable boards without having to have any special adapter cables. We've updated this uh, five by five millimeter LED. It's not a smart LED, it's just red, green, blue. Um, we sell them in strips of 10. The uh, pinout has changed, just wanted to let people know to check the new pinout. Uh, this ATECC 608 is a crypto coprocessor. It can securely store your keys and then perform HMAX uh, or SHA 256s or AES 128s or elliptical ECDAs uh, for public key cryptography without having those keys exposed so that you can not worry about having uh, key security for your main microcontroller or microprocessor uh, and have this chip do the secure enclave work for you. Make your own secure enclave. This is a 9-pin JST cable which is used with the Monster Mask. It's two uh, 240 by 240 IPS TFT displays driven by our Cortex M4 processor. can do really beautiful rendered eyeball displays and you can even break them apart and then use that cable that we showed previously to make a uh, you know tethered but separated um, you know dual eyeball display, it's got audio inputs and outputs. Um, it's got a boopable capacitive touch nose, and it's ready for all of your Halloween mask and cosplay projects. You'll be able to update the LED uh, the TFT eyes to any kind of design you want just by dragging and dropping some files. Okay, that's it.